Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be making this retro style Florida postcard. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course, don't forget to share with your friends. Just click on that share button as well and share. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as well. I'm putting up new videos all the time, and you don't want to miss any of those as they come up. If you really want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my training course, and you'll find a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start off this project with a brand new file. Let's just close this down and then file, new, blank file. And set this at the default Photoshop Elements size. And you want the width at 6, height at 4, and a resolution of 300. And the background color should be white. These are the defaults, so it should already be all set once you choose the default elements size right there. Choose OK, and there we go. I'm just going to dock that right there. So there's our image. Now, let's bring in our background. I'll just go up here to File and Open. Now, this project uses two images, and you'll find links for these two images on my projects page. There's a link for that, of course, in the description. So I'll open this one up right here. That's the beach picture. There we go. We'll be using this one, and to get this picture into our project, you can either open it this way and drag it over, which brings it in, or you can use the place command. Either one works. Let me just show you the place command version here. File, place. Same thing. Grab your image, choose place, and it brings it right in. Now, the place command brings it in to fit its largest dimension. Just click on that checkbox. So it's real close to proper size already. Now you need to make it a bit larger to fit the page. So I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. Just give me some space to work with around that picture. There we go. About 29% looks pretty good. And then second, using the Control-T keyboard shortcut, this brings up our options down here, our transform options, and our control handles. Just grab the corner and drag this out and do the same thing for the bottom right-hand corner. Drag that out until it fits. It'll be cutting off some of the sides, but that doesn't matter on this picture. And then choose OK. So there we go, there's our background image. We now can put in our Florida text on top of this. And for that, I'm using a standard typeface. You probably already have this on your computer. It's Berlin Sands FB Bold. If you don't have this typeface already, let me show you where you can find this. This typeface can be downloaded right here from ttfonts.net. It's a free download. and easy to get. Now ignore this big ad right there. That's just an ad. Ignore that one and scroll down a bit and there's the download link right here. This actually takes you to a secondary page and it starts a download link automatically on that page. So that's the one you want right here. Download Berlin Sands FB font. Now again, you probably already have this one included on your computer. It's a real standard typeface. There's a very good chance you have it already. If not, you'll find it right here. And I have a link for this also on the materials page, just in case you need to download this typeface. Okay, back to our project. Now the color I'm using for this one, it's right here. Any standard orange will work out just fine. This is pure yellow orange, any real orange. We're not going to be keeping this color. This is just kind of a temporary holding color as we set things up. So just anything in the orange range is fine. But that one's pretty good. It's just, if you scroll down here on the list, default color swatches, just scroll down and you first begin to see the brighter oranges. It's that one right there, right to the left here of that yellow. Okay, there's that. It's set at bold, as you can see here. One nice thick one. And size set at 72 and centered text. Okay, with all that set, you just come right in the middle of the page right here. And then with your cap locks on, just type in Florida and choose OK. So there we go. There is the Florida text right on top of that page. Now, if the background is causing some visibility issues, you can just hide that temporarily. So we're just seeing just the type right there. OK, that's the basic text. We now need to warp this text and give it that more interesting shape in there. Do that with the type warp. Let's go back to our type tool here. And just triple click one, two, three. Actually, one, two worked. Double click. There we go. Select the typeface. Come down here. You should see the type options already down below here in the tool options. 
and this one right here is your create warped text little dialog box here come down where it says arc it's a very top option it should say horizontal we'll now adjust the settings in here to give us exactly the right look. I'm going to pull the bend down to about 35%. You can actually just type it in here if you want to. Horizontal distortion. I have this pulled way down to a negative 62. See how it just kind of bends the text in there? And again, you can type this number in if you want to. I'll just go ahead and do that. It's a negative 62. And a little bit of vertical distortion as well. I'll just type this one in. This one is a negative 25. And then choose OK right there and okay so this gives us the the bend on our text now I need to have this twisted around a little bit kind of rotated so let's go ahead and do that now you're still on your type layer up here so just use the control T keyboard shortcut and that brings up the transform options down below here and where it says degrees on the right hand side right down here just set this at 17.5 that rotates it around. You can see there, nice little rotation. Click on that green check mark. So there's our rotation. And it's a bit too wide, as you can see. So we need to bring that in a little bit. So back again to that dialog box. So that's the Control T keyboard shortcut. Grab the left side here. Actually, right down here where it says Constraint Proportions, uncheck that. Make sure that's not checked right there. OK, grab your left-hand side and pull this in until that width says 85% or at this point we can just type in if you want to 85% and then choose OK and there we go there is the nice curve bit for our text you can you know position this like this we can always reposition later but now is the best chance we'll actually have to pull this down a little bit later on but I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point just kind of put it right here now we need to do a little bit of styling on this I need to have a drop shadow placed on this and we'll use that drop shadow to create that interesting fake 3D effect. So go up here to layer, come down to layer style, style settings. Click on drop shadow. At the very top here, change the lighting angle to 120. This is just a little bit up, off the upper left hand corner there. Bring the opacity here all the way up so you can really see that drop shadow showing up in there. Set the size at zero. This makes it a hard edge. So zero size. Bring your distance out to six. There we go. Now we need to have this drop shadow a brown as opposed to a black. So click in here. And right down here we have this little pound sign. Just type in 613500. You're just kind of a dark brown. Choose OK. So that matches that color. And then choose OK. So there we go. There's a nice little drop shadow on that. Now we're going to be doing a neat little trick in here and making a bunch of duplicates of this layer and then offsetting them a little bit each time we make our duplicate. By doing that, it'll give us that fake drop shadow. The, we'll be seeing this edge of this drop shadow in here giving us kind of a 3D effect. Let's see how that works here in just a second. Now it's a special shortcut key, kind of a couple different keys that we'll be using in here. First one is hold the Alt key down and tap on the up arrow once. What that does is it makes a copy and moves that copy up one notch. Let me just show you that. There's the, let me see, kind of just moves it up just one notch. So it's up one notch and then hit the left arrow key without the Alt key, so left arrow key, and it goes over one. So we've copied and moved up one and we went over one. We'll just keep on doing that until we have a bunch of copies. So it's Alt up and then over, Alt up and over, Alt up, 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 and over. So when you see copy nine, you have enough copies in there. So what we've done is we've just kind of been making these copies. They're stacked on top of each other. And that drop shadow is what we're seeing in here as that fake 3D edge. So kind of a cute little neat trick. Let me just explain that again. I'm not going to do it again, but I'll also explain it again. You hold the Alt key and hit the up arrow that makes a new layer and moves it up one. And then you hit the left key that goes to the left one. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to zoom in real tight. You can actually see the leveling at the edges in here a little bit. 
when you zoom in, there you go, a little kind of banding. Each one of those layers in there has been, you know, kind of up and over, up and over. And that's a little bit of a drop shadow you're seeing there each time. But when you're back here, you don't see any of that, and all you see is this nice fake 3D effect. Okay, so far, so good. Now we're on our top layer up here. We're going to be adding in some more layer styling on this so it looks a little bit better. And let's just double click where the FX is right there, double click. Let's add a stroke. Now we're doing this just on just that one top layer up here. That's our foreground layer. And set the position to center. Bring the size up to 13. So that's 13 pixels. And then change the color here. Click on that little icon. Click in here, so this and drag to the upper left hand corner. And that gives you white, or just type in all Fs down there. Either one works. So nice little white border around the text and choose OK. All right, now we can bring our background picture back in again. So we're now seeing our text on top of the background picture. So far, so good. Now it looks like it's a little bit low to my eye at this point. We can adjust that. Just click on your top layer here. Hold the Shift key and click on the bottom one of your text layers. They're all selected. And then just use your arrow keys to reposition that a little bit. I'll just move it up just a bit. I think that looks a bit better right in here someplace. There we go. Okay, so there's our Florida with our background picture. All we have left to do now is just that kind of fun little retro edge around our picture. And we'll do that. Down here, come down to the background layer. Let's hide the beach picture right there. Change the foreground background colors there to false. Just click on the little, little bit right here, this little icon. Black is your foreground color. Come over to graphics, and in graphics, I'll scroll to the top. There we are. Here's our graphics. We're in by type and shape. And then scroll down a ways. You'll see kind of big blotches of black. Here we are. Right near this one right there, just kind of a, a ziggy zag edge, and it's called crop shape 20. Click on that, and you should see it drop in behind your Florida text. Okay, back to our layers. There it is. Now, if you want to, you can hide all of these foreground layers. And if you're working on a more recent version of Photoshop Elements that has layer groups up here, you can actually put all these into a layer group, just kind of clean things up. I'll leave them out so this is works with any version of Photoshop Elements. So let's just hide all this stuff. Just click on the eyes in here. We'll just hide all those layers. There we go. Okay, we're on our shape layer. Let's put in a couple of guidelines. Actually, one will be enough. Just grab the left-hand side ruler here and pull it in until it hits that three. If you're not seeing your rulers, just go up to view and make sure that rulers is selected right there. I'll just make sure that guides is checked as well so we see our guides. Okay, now, on this shape, bring it up here so it's just up, just up next to that edge. Use that Control T keyboard shortcut again to bring up our control handles and then pull that down so it just about touches that center line. And choose OK. Now, take that layer, make a copy of this or duplicate, just pull it up here to the new layer button, makes a copy, pull that over here to the right, and see how it just kind of overlaps right there? I'm going to zoom in at the top so you can see this. There we go. Now I'm on the right side one, and I'll use the left arrow. I'm just going to kind of back this up just like that until that top edge matches. And you can go up and, and see that a bit better. So if it's popping above like that, you're too high. If it's popping under, you're too low. Let's just kind of move it back and forth until you get it nicely lined up so that it matches these other points. And that looks like that's pretty good right there. Okay, let's just back to fit screen. So I now have this look. Now these are on two separate layers. So let's merge these two layers. Hold the control key down. They're both selected. Right click and merge shapes. Working with shape layers, so merge shapes. Now take this one, make a duplicate of this, but bring it up here to the new layer button, and then pull that straight down. So you're just down below, and then using your arrow keys again, Pull it up until it just matches. This time you're watching the left and the right sides, you know, over here or over here. And we'll zoom in on that so you can see that. 
looks like it's right there. And again, the up and down arrows, you can kind of see that moving. There it is. Let's back out just a little bit here. I'll just zoom back out just a bit. And we'll see how that looks compared to everything else. Actually, that's about where it should be. Now, the waves in here aren't really even throughout the whole picture. So don't worry about it. If it's off by just a little bit, that's just fine. Okay. I think we're good here. Let's go back to fit screen. And then select both of these two layers. Again, hold the control key down, click on your second layer, right click, merge shapes. Back to our move tool up here. And then the control T keyboard shortcut again. This is pull us away from our upper left hand edge there and pull it down just a bit. And it should be able to be centered just like that. So it's kind of the same amount of space around the outsides. That's all good. Let's now show our beach picture again. Go back to the beach picture, right click, and choose create clipping mask. This puts the beach picture inside of that black shape. And there we go. There's our kind of nice retro border effect on here. Last little bit, come down to the shape layer and let's put a drop shadow on that. Go up here to layer, layer style, style settings. And in the style settings, drop shadow, it should still be at 120 degrees. Size at 7, that's the default, that's fine. Let's set our distance at 19. And the opacity should be 35 already, that's also the default. Choose OK. There's a nice little drop shadow. Let's go to the background layer and let's hide that guide. Just uncheck guides. And there we go. Okay, let's see how this looks. I'll just pull this out and use my floating windows here and pull that down and zoom in a little bit. A couple of clicks should do it. And now we have our background and our nice little edge in there. See that? Okay, let's go ahead now and just show our text layers again. And I'll start from the bottom layer. And I'll just begin walking my way up here. Bring our text layers in. There we go. So there is Florida on top of that background. All we have left to do is just put the oranges inside of the Florida text. Okay, let's bring this back down and we'll zoom this to fit screen. There we go. So for this last step, come up to the very top layer. It should say Florida copy nine. And then I'll open up our second picture. File open, or you can use file places. This one right here is the picture of oranges, like that. That's what we're going to be using. I'll do the place command again this time. File, place, grab the oranges, choose place. That brings that picture in like that. Choose OK. I'll leave it at that size. That's fine. Now, just like we just did with our background picture going into that shape, do the exact same trick up here. Right click on the name and choose create clipping mask, it puts that picture inside of the text. There we go. And there it is. There is our retro vintage style Florida postcard. And then we'll just bring this up again, get everything full size one last time here, get a good view of this. And there it is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button and of course share. Also subscribe. And to learn everything about Photoshop Elements. Look for my complete course and there's a link right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.